Shortly after Shin Godzilla dominated the Japanese box office, Toho announced that a Godzilla animated trilogy of films was officially in the works. Written by renowned novelist and anime screenwriter Gen Urobuchi, it was hoped that the limitless potential of animation would set the franchise free to do new and creative things and take it into even more bolder directions. And in another first for the series, all three films were set to be distributed internationally on Netflix shortly after their theatrical releases in Japan. It was the dawn of a new and exciting exciting era for Godzilla, which makes it that much more unfortunate then that the first chapter, Planet of the Monsters, fails to live up to its possibilities. Following the near extinction of mankind at the hands of Godzilla, the last survivors, aided by two technologically advanced alien races, escape into outer space and search for a new planet to call home. Twenty years later, with morale at an all-time low and the chances of finding a habitable world nearly non-existent, it is decided to return to Earth. There they find that 20,000 years have passed, and the planet's ecosystem has evolved around Godzilla's presence. With nowhere else to go, the last remnants of humanity has no choice but to make one last stand and reclaim their home from the king of the monsters. Conceptually, Planet of the Monsters was a long overdue step for the Godzilla franchise. Many fans have no doubt clamored for the series to make its way into anime form, where it would no longer be constrained by the limitations of reality. The possibilities were nearly endless, and within its opening minutes, the first chapter of the anime trilogy promises to live up to those possibilities, establishing a future world ravaged by monsters and made more politically complicated by the presence of several alien visitors, both of which clearly take inspiration from the franchise's rich past. As far as setups go, a fan couldn't ask for more. However, the longer the film goes on, the more you realize its potential is being squandered, leaving you with a film that spends way too much telling instead of showing. I'll take it back. No matter what. With our own hands. Indeed, Planet of the Monsters' greatest sin is not taking advantage of its medium. Instead of engaging the viewer with gorgeous, eye-popping visuals, it bogs itself down with endless scenes of dramatic grandstanding and tedious technobabble, to the point where most viewers will probably feel utterly disengaged. This effect is multiplied by a script that spends almost no time developing the world or its characters. There is an immensely interesting and entertaining universe to be explored here, but the film never takes the time to, far more interested instead in making sure you know the technicalities of how Godzilla's atomic breath works. Sure, it's an interesting thing to learn, but without an engaging narrative to support it, it's very difficult to care. Most of the characters have no dimension to them at all, and the few that do are one note. The protagonist Haro Sakaki is unforgettable for how forgettably stereotypical he is. He is the archetypal anime hero, obnoxiously angry and overbearing in a way that merely annoys. His melodramatic proclamations are constant and grow wearisome real quick, and are further encouraged by the only other standout character, Metfis, a strange and off-puttingly monotone XF priest who takes a particular liking to Haruro. He's easily the most interesting character, pushing circumstances along to give Haruro more authority. The rest of the cast is just background noise. The character Yuko is particularly egregious, a stock anime love interest with no agency or depth. There are plenty of others, but since so many of them look the same and so little is given for them to do, they are interchangeable, which can lead to confusion as to who is who. Not even Godzilla could- However, it's possible that it might have multiplied. That thing is a unique genetic aberration. Impossible. Perhaps worst of all is that Planet of the Monsters also fails to live up to its name, featuring very little monster action. Aside from Godzilla, there are flying creatures so generic they're barely worth mentioning. Godzilla himself is absent for almost the entirety of the film, and when he does show up, he barely moves. While this does do a good job conveying his immense weight and size, it shows yet again how the film fails to take advantage of the art form. However, to its credit, the film does alter Godzilla in some interesting ways. Here he is depicted as elemental and plant-like, the symbol and personification of Mother Nature's wrath. And while his absence from the film is made all the more painful by its lethargic pace, the impact he has in the final act does make a strong impression, conveying a terrifying sense of scale and religious awe that almost makes all the build-up to it worth the wait. <laughs>
Planet of the Monsters uses a pseudo 3D style of animation, and the results are a mixed bag. While there is a visual elegance to certain stationary moments, when in motion it comes off as rather stiff and awkward. On the whole, it's not terrible, but it's a style that does take some time getting used to. And finally, it should come as no surprise that the soundtrack is great. Takayuki Hattori returns and delivers what might be his best work for the franchise. His score does all the heavy lifting, conveying all the emotions that the film on its own cannot. Godzilla Planet of the Monsters is a disappointing start to the anime trilogy, and a disappointing first foray into the world of animation. Despite a setup enriched with creative ideas, it gets bogged down with a narrative more concerned with the technicalities than in telling an emotionally involving story. Had the film at least delivered some visually stunning set pieces, this might be forgiven, but it fails even in that. There are some good moments, and it ends on a high note that leaves you curious as to what happens in the next film, but on its own, it's a dull watch that even the most dedicated of G-fans will find a chore to get through. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.